Sure. Uh, my name is Ian McGillivray, and I work for the Canadian International Development Agency in Canada. And I'm CETA's principal advisor on agriculture, and I manage the EFAD program from headquarters. Of course, we have our executive direct director who lives uh, in Rome and who is our lead uh, on the oversight of EFAD from a governance standpoint. And uh, after spending uh, a day in Brasilia talking with government officials and uh, a couple days here in the field talking with state, state authorities and project level people with the Dom Hilder Camera project, what are your initial impressions of Dom Hilder Camera? Well, I think like most of us, uh, we're very impressed. Uh, what, uh, what is most striking is the, uh, the bottom-up approach. Uh, clearly, uh, uh, IFAD uh, essentially tries to play a, a backbencher role, uh, providing a priority to the country, priority to federal and state, but more importantly, at the community level. It's quite striking to see the, uh, the ownership and the lead that's being provided by the family units within their community. I think that's uh, certainly uh, a recipe for success, which, uh, you know, we, we talk a lot about, and I think seeing it here in practice is, uh, is really quite, quite striking. And uh, it really makes us think. I think the, the fact that we've had an opportunity to, uh, to come from Rome, uh, from, from being at headquarters, this balance of being able to uh, actually see action in, on the ground and in the field is, uh, is so important for us. How do projects like Dom Hilder Camera become sustainable? How do you define sustainable sustainability and have you seen it within the project? Well, I, I guess sustainability certainly is a long-term concept and, and I think one should always remember that. Uh, what we have here is, uh, is clearly an initiative that likely wouldn't be half what it is without the uh, political will of this country which started uh, now uh, a decade ago or less that has provided such an impetus to and commitment by the government to provide the resources and the support that's needed. Everything is coming together but certainly sustainability, I think, is a watchword. It's something we always have to keep, uh, keep in mind. To talk about sustainability at this stage is, is probably something to talk about, but it's not there yet. I mean, clearly what we have is communities who are looking and searching for becoming sustainable. And I think it's something that we have to look at as we look to the future. Uh, clearly, the the programs that are, the, the, the safety net programs that the government has put in place, universal health care is something that is likely to remain in Brazil, but the purchasing capacity of the government to be able to provide food for schools may not be there in 10, 15 years. And so therefore it's vital that these communities and the new initiatives that we plan and program with them take into account diversifying markets and make sure that they don't just depend on government for, for their sales. So does EFAD need to be in Brazil? I think this is, a, this is a very important question that one has to uh, not take lightly and discuss very seriously. I think uh, we have to be very careful about uh, whatever decisions are made or whatever things we say. Uh, we, it's, it's difficult to compare. I mean, if we come from communities in Africa and we come to communities in Brazil, we might say, well, don't we need to put more resources on balance in Africa where people are, are certainly illiterate, that they don't have the organization and, and community structures that we have here, and, and, and we have a big problem with disease beyond just agriculture. And so, in that sense, uh, one, one could probably interpret that of saying, well, maybe, maybe EFAD should be putting a greater proportion of its resources in, in, uh, in areas where there is most need. But undoubtedly, uh, I think probably two, fo two things are important here when one looks at uh, the role that IFAD is playing in Brazil. Definitely, IFAD is not only contributing, but it's also learning. And, I, and, and it's that cross-transfer that is vitally important. IFAD could not transfer any of this if it's not engaged from the beginning in a country like this. We've noticed that a lot of what IFAD has been doing in Brazil has uh, touched quite 
deeply into continuing processes of development in the country addressing poverty and hunger. And that learning is also transferable, not just with South-South, but it's transferable by what IFA does in other parts of the world.